What's up, students? I hope you're having the best day of your life today. Today, a short answer paragraph. The name of this problem, which is given on the AP Classroom College Board, is the figure shows a block on the top of an inclined plane. It's one of those questions where you're like, how could this be a free response question? It looks like there's really nothing going on, but there's actually a ton of physics here. But this is a prime example of a question where students may not know exactly what they want from you. They, they, you may not know exactly the amount of detail, so please pay attention. I'm going to give you a, a game plan and a format, a template that you can use to answer all of these paragraph type questions to guarantee yourself some success. The figure above shows a system consisting of a block, an incline, and earth. This end earth is actually really, really important because it's going to tell me something in just a minute. So I have the block, I have an incline plane, and I have earth. So there's really three things inside this system. The reason that they add earth in here is because we know that the force that's going to act on this block down the incline, FG, if I include earth, I can say that now everything is conserved. This is not an outside force acting on the system. So now I can use conservation of momentum and I can also use conservation of energy. Now essentially in the first trial, the block and the plane are at rest when the block is released. But in this first trial, there's no friction between the block and the plane or the plane and the table. So we'll call this one trial one. And then over here, I'm going to set up trial two. Essentially the same thing. So I can just draw some pictures. Finn, that is a terrible straight line. Let's cheat a little bit. Let's use the old straight line thingamajiggy. Yes, like a boss. Here we go. So now we have an inclined plane, and then we have a block. So we'll call, this will be our trial two. In trial two, the plane is now fixed to the table. All right, so the inclined plane can't move, but the block still has a frictionless surface between it. All right. Indicate whether the speed of the block relative to the table down here, when it reaches the bottom, is greater in trial one or trial two. Justify your answer in a clear, coherent paragraph length explanation. Okay. They're essentially saying which one of these two blocks is going to be moving the fastest when it gets down here and why. So you might be asking yourself, okay, how much detail do I need to go into? You know, how much do they really want to know? And I'm going to tell you for all paragraphs or whenever you see explanations of anything, okay, guys, for paragraphs and explanations, ask yourself one question. What are the variables inside this system? Every single time I answer one of these questions, I'm going to list all the variables and then I'm going to make sure I just cross them off and include them in my answer. In this problem right here, let's take a look at all the variables that we have. Well, we have the mass of the block. It is going to do some moving, some speed. It has some height above the earth, so I have some gravitational energy. I have some kinetic energy. I'm going to have some momentum, P. I'm going to have some acceleration down the incline. And also, what's going to make that accelerate, I'm going to have some forces. So when I'm explaining why the speed is going to be different or the same in trial one and two, I'm going to make sure that I include or mention every single one of these variables and maybe even some others if they come up while I'm writing. So first, I'm going to make my first point. So the first point I'm going to make is for trial one and two, because gravity is the only net force acting on the system and accelerating the block, I know that energy and momentum are conserved. Now look what I just did here. I got rid of acceleration, F net, and momentum. And I even talked a little bit about energies. Now, just because I mentioned them doesn't mean I can't mention them again, but I want to make sure I at least mention all of them once. I'll add my next point in a different color. Also, in both cases, the gravitational potential energy to start is equal because the gravitational potential energy is given by mg delta y and mg delta y are constant for both trials. So now I've mentioned m, I've mentioned ug, and I've also mentioned delta y, another one that I didn't even realize I was going to mention. Now I can start to look at each trial independently. In trial one, two masses will be moving because friction will not hold the inclined plane. When this thing gets going, the inclined plane is going to be pushed this way as the block moves this way. So there's going to be two speeds. As opposed to in trial two where the potential energy goes all to the block. And I would probably show this. I would probably show in a figure one and two and add this in that P before equals P after. So before I have no momentum. 
But then that after, I'm going to have the momentum of the inclined plane plus the momentum of the block, where over here I have zero kilogram meters per second, and it's all going to go into the momentum of the block. Therefore, mv, this v is going to be greater than the sum of these two v's. That means this momentum can get all of the potential energy before. This shows momentum, and then I could say that UG is going to be converted into kinetic energy of just the block, where over here I have UG that's going to be the kinetic energy of the block plus the kinetic energy of the inclined plane. This statement right here is what allows me to say that in trial two, the block will be moving faster. And in this last statement, I knocked off kinetic energy, and that allowed me to talk about speed. So you can talk about speed either through momentum being greater this way or from the energy because all the energy is just going to be connected, uh, converted into the kinetic energy of the block as opposed to that same amount of potential energy being converted to two kinetic energies. And here's how the points for this one worked out. I believe it was seven points. You got one point for talking about energy and momentum being conserved. You talked about, you got one point for seeing that potential energy is going to be converted to kinetic energy. You got another point for saying that it's going to go to two masses here as opposed to one mass. So essentially showing this relationship where you could either show it or write it out. You got another point for talking about the momentum. Another point for talking about the energy. So what was that? One, two, three, four, five. This one was worth six then. And then you got another point for putting this in a coherent paragraph length explanation. Not a ton of words, but like I said, look at all these variables we talked about. So in summary, guys, write down all the variables that you need and find a way to at least mention them and relate them in both trials. That's how you'll know that you had enough information that the AP board wanted you to explain. And that shows competence of this physics concept. I hope that helps. If it did, please give the video a thumbs up. Look for more solution videos as we get closer to the AP exam. I hope you have yourself an amazing day.